Well, I want to welcome you to our service. And as I wrote, I think, in the update, we're finally getting a little cooler weather. It's only going to be about 97 today. I know that sounds crazy, uh, but uh, it's cooling off. It'll be down into the, by Sunday they say, maybe even down to the low 90s. It's been, as I wrote, I think, it's been very hot here and unusually dry. So uh, we're looking forward to cooler weather and maybe even some rain. Sometimes we'll get rain in November. I know we've been thinking and seeing on the news about the folks down in Louisiana, Texas, that area again, getting their third hurricane of this season, which is quite uh, unprecedented, I guess. So, uh, and then of course there's, uh, I think the forest fires are finally getting uh, under control somewhat over in California. So we, uh, we never know. We, uh, we're not in charge of nature, which is probably, probably okay when you think about it. But uh, there's still uh, there's a lot of problems in our old world, but there's still so much for which to be thankful. And today I'm going to uh, kind of have the second part uh, of, a, of a message. Last week I spoke about uh, salvation or justification, but it, it, salvation is a, is a better word. It's easier to, for us to, to uh, think about. Salvation by grace. Salvation by grace. This week we're going to talk about the rest of, of, of the message, which is through faith. Salvation by grace through faith. Okay, so let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we are thankful for this day, another day in which we live as your children. And uh, we live in simple and humble faith. We're going to be talking about uh, what this means. And I pray for your blessing upon uh, this service today and that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you will speak to us all. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so we'll go back to the same uh, passage that I read last week, and it's Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 through 9. But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love which, with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God. Let me read that uh, verse again. For by grace you have been saved through faith. Heavenly Father, I pray now that you would impart your holy word through my words and the meditations of our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> what is faith? Let's think about that. What is faith? The gospel is the good news that we are saved because of God's love, because of God's grace, given to us in Jesus, his only begotten Son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. That's grace. But then it says, so that whosoever believeth in him 
believeth, that's faith, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So, faith is believing. Faith is believing. Faith is trusting. One of the, the definitions that has been helpful for me over the years uh, is, is to say that, uh, that faith is believing, trusting in that which you do not fully understand. That's important, I think. I mean, it's been helpful for me. Uh, we know many things. Uh, we know uh, a lot of things. We, we know... Uh, well, we, we know that the sun is shining. We know that the temperature, whatever it is. We, we know that 2 plus 2 equals 4. Uh, we, we know a lot of things. Some people know how to build things. Some people are excellent at, uh, at carpentry, for example. Some people know a lot of things about engineering. Some people know how to fly airplanes. Uh, we know many things. Doctors. Just think of all the things that doctors have to know uh, when, they, uh, when they, they go into surgery or whatever they're doing. When you go to your doctor, you know that he knows a lot so that he can, he can take care of you. Uh, but knowledge, knowing something, is not the same as faith. We are saved by God's grace through faith. It doesn't say through knowing. It doesn't say that we're saved by grace through our intelligence. Uh, it says through faith. So, one way of thinking about it then is that faith is believing in that which you do not fully understand. I think it's helpful. I do not, nobody, nobody that I've ever met uh, has ever been able to uh, explain, or certainly not to fully explain, John 3.16. It's just not explainable. Uh, people could begin to ask questions, well, how do you know that? How do you know that God loved the world? And so much so that he gave his only begotten son. We say, as Christians, as believers, we say, well, because the Bible says so. But what if someone says, well, how do you know the Bible is God's word? Well, we believe it's God's word, but can you prove it? And, you know, you get into all kinds of, of uh, those kinds of, of questions and debates and everything else. Finally, it's a matter of trust. It's a matter of believing. Now, the second point I want to make goes back to what I think was one of the greatest, um, one of the greatest truths that Martin Luther ever wrote. Now, Luther wrote a lot of books. He wrote all kinds of books. Somebody said that if you had Luther's work, there's actually a, a collection of books that are entitled Luther's Works. And if you wanted to have them all, it'd be over 50 volumes. Now, in the world, I, you know, how could somebody write that much? But he wrote a lot. He was brilliant. He was a brilliant theologian. And, but one of the things... And of course, when as Lutherans, those of you that are Lutheran, remember when you were studying your catechism and you studied the commandments, each one, and the three articles of the creed, and you, you studied the Lord's Prayer, the, the introduction, the seven petitions, and the conclusion. And after each, like if you were, if you were studying, uh, say, on the, on the fourth commandment, you shall honor your father and your mother that the days may be long in the land in which they live. And uh, then it would say, what does this mean? And then that was Luther's explanation. Well, 
in his explanation of the third article, remember that in your catechism, the Apostles' Creed has three articles. The first article focuses on God the Father, the second article on God the Son, and the third article on God the Holy Spirit. There are some other parts to that too, but basically, I mean, it, it, in terms of the Trinity, first article, Father, second article, Son, third article, Holy Spirit. And in Luther's explanation of the Holy Spirit, I'm going to, it's, it's terrific. You've heard me repeat it before. Listen to this. I believe, Luther wrote, I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. But, the Holy Spirit has called me through the gospel, enlightened me, and sanctified me, and kept me in the one true faith. In the same way he calls, enlightens, sanctifies, and keeps the whole Christian church on earth. Okay. You see how important that is? It's just crucial. Uh, having faith in Jesus as your Lord and Savior is not something that any of us could ever accomplish on our own. Uh, just as, I, I would put it this way, we are not saved on the basis of our good works. We're not saved on the basis of our merit. We're not saved because we're so good. We're saved because God is so gracious. Now, in other words, salvation is a gift. It's a gift. Now, how can we accept the gift? See? Uh, if someone comes to you and wants to give you a gift, there are really two options. We can accept the gift, or we can reject it. We can say, thanks, but no thanks. Okay? Uh, now, on the basis of our own reason and strength, we can uh, accept some gifts or reject them. If somebody comes to me and says, I'd really like you to have... Um, a brand new car. I'd like you to have a brand new uh, Ford or Chev or Cadillac. I want, I want to give you this car. Here's the keys. Well, I could either accept those keys and say thank you, or I could say, well, you know, I really don't need a car right now. The one I've got is pretty good. Why don't you give it to someone else? I can make that decision on the basis of my own reason or my own strength. I mean, you can decide. <clears throat> Luther says when it comes to salvation, when it comes to believing in Jesus as our Lord and Savior, you can't make that decision on your own. I'm going to, I'll explain. <clears throat> you, you, <clears throat> okay. You can decide to join the Moose, the Moose Club. Now, there's all kinds of organizations. You can be, a, I always think about the animals. You can be a moose. You can be an eagle. Uh, you can be, a, there's some other ones that are, uh, what's? Elk. Elk. <laughs> Ron, who's behind the camera. An elk. The Elks Club, the Moose Club, the... The, the Eagles Club, and, and of course you're going to decide where, if you're a vet, veteran, you can join the Legion or you can join the VFW. We're in the campaign now, right? Right? Oh, you're getting tired of those ads on TV. I'll be glad when it's over, but you can be a Republican or you can be a Democrat or you can be an Independent or you can be, well, you can be whatever you want. You can make a lot of decisions in life, and we all have to. You can make them 
on the basis of your own uh, thinking, your own uh, deciding. All right. Not so when it comes to faith in Jesus. Because Luther said, I believe that I cannot, I can't, I simply cannot on the basis of my own reason or strength believe in Jesus as my Lord and Savior. That's why I never boast. I never boast about my faith any more than I boast about my good works. I just, that's, it. you know, I, 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 so it's ridiculous. You know, it's, it's just ridiculous. It would be ridiculous for me to go around and tell everybody uh, how much good works I do. I've, I mean, I can't even imagine why anybody would do it because it's just foolishness. Oh, I'm pretty good, you know, I, uh, whatever. But it's the same with faith. I think sometimes uh, we can get a, uh, we can turn faith into an accomplishment. That's what I'm trying to say. We can, we can turn faith into something about which we can take credit. We can be proud. I'm proud of my faith. I'm a person of strong faith in Jesus. Oh, come on. I didn't make a decision about Jesus as my Lord and Savior on the basis of my own reason or strength. That's what Luther said, and he was absolutely right. Now, as a Lutheran, now I know we're not all Lutherans. I mean, that's fine. There's a variety in the church. That's great. But as a Lutheran, I believe that God came to me by the power of the Holy Spirit when I was baptized. And I was baptized when I was about six weeks old. And I was baptized at home. The minister came to our farmhouse, and I remember that's the one that burned down when I was about, about eight, I think. But I remember the old farmhouse, and it had a wood stove in the kitchen. And I can remember when there was a kitchen table, a round kitchen table. And I remember my mom telling me that, that, when, that Pastor Borgbreen, that was his name, he came to the house because I'd been so sick. I was just very sick, deathly sick, I guess. And so he came to the farmhouse, and my mother put a bowl of water out on the table, and Pastor Borgbreen baptized me with water and the Spirit. He baptized me in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And I was five weeks old, and they thought, I probably, I was going, I was taken then after the baptism to Everett General Hospital for uh, an operation for a pyloric stenosis. That's where the pyloric valve between the stomach and the intestine is closed. And what happens then, when that happens, the baby starves to death because it can't get into the intestine where the nutrients are taken out of the, of the food. Okay, in other words, I didn't have anything to do with it. What, you don't have anything to do with anything when you're five weeks old and dying. I believe, now some people, they look at baptism differently, but it isn't different. When, when, when Billy Graham has his, his crusades, and at the end he has his, what's called an altar call, and what does he say? He says, now you, he talks to the people, he has preached and he has preached the gospel. It's not just Billy Graham, it's not just his words. He's not trying to persuade you to become an elk or an eagle or a lion. He's not trying to persuade you to become a Republican or a Democrat for Pete's sakes. He's preaching the gospel. The good news that Jesus Christ died for you. And uh, that's grace. And by faith, you accept the gift, the Holy Spirit. Billy Graham preaches with the confidence that the Holy Spirit is, is speaking through his words. I preach with the same confidence. And nobody should ever preach without that confidence. 
The Holy Spirit is speaking through the gospel, whether we're reading it, we're reading the Bible, or whether we're hearing it. So the Holy Spirit in those big crusades is speaking through Billy Graham, and Billy Graham is saying, now you, the Spirit is speaking, all you have to do is accept the gift. And the Holy Spirit wants to help you to do it. Just think of that. The Holy Spirit is calling you. And sure enough, there are many people that get up out of their seat and they go forward. And in so doing, they're accepting the gift. They're accepting the gift of salvation. If you ask Billy Graham, do you think that they're doing that on the basis of their own reason and strength? I know he would say absolutely not. The only way that a person can ever, can ever have faith is through and by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what faith is. That's what faith is. So we don't boast in our good works and we don't boast in our great faith. We, it, it's all grace. God loves us so much that he gave his only begotten son for us, and then he enables us, he helps us, he makes it possible for us to accept that gift. Okay. Now, a couple more things about faith. It's absolutely crucial. It's God's gift to, to us. He, he calls, remember I said, I can't by my own reason or strength, but he calls, he enlightens, he sanctifies, and he keeps us in the faith. So does that mean that it's all just automatic? No, no, it doesn't mean that. The fact that I was baptized as a little baby, that was by the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we believe that, that I, I said earlier that that's when I became a Christian, and I didn't even know it. However, I know people that were baptized as babies, and so do you. You know people that were baptized as babies. You know people that were brought to Sunday school so that they could begin to grow in the faith. You know people who went through confirmation so they could learn more and more about their faith. But then somewhere along the line, they renounced the faith. We all know people. In other words, God is, it, 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 our Heavenly Father is not a dictator. He calls, He enlightens, He sanctifies. Jesus said, I will never leave you or forsake you. I will always love you. He, he's there, He's the good shepherd. And if a, if a little lamb gets lost, He goes seeking after it. But there are no Tickets to heaven. Baptism isn't a ticket to heaven. No, it's not that. Uh, I, I used to say, I think I've said this, but I know I've said it before. When you've been preaching for as long as I have, you say the same things over, I'm sure. <clears throat> I, but I have said, you know, if a person, and I've said this many different times, I said, to people, you know, if you want to go to hell and you're willing to really work at it, you'll have your way. But it's not what God wants. He'll keep calling. He'll keep, he, oh, he never gives up on us. And I've seen that happen too. I've seen people who have moved away from the faith. They've said, I don't want to have anything to do with it for whatever reason. And there's always reasons. And yet, they have been, they've been called back to the faith. It's happened. It's happened in some ways to all of us. We've all had times when our faith has been, has been kind of weak. We've all been spent time in the valley. Uh, it, it's just the way life is. But the good shepherd is a good shepherd. He doesn't leave us. He doesn't, he's not satisfied with 99. Remember, there were 99 that safely lay in the shelter of the fold, but one was lost. He makes sure the 99 are safe, and then he goes searching for the one. Sometimes the one could be you, or it could be me. Okay, now one more thing I want to say about faith. 
And here, here I'm going to quote from the book of James. And I won't go into detail, but Martin Luther wasn't a real big fan of James because, see, what Luther was so interested in, he was interested in making sure that the people, the gospel had been lost sight of in the church of his day. There was all kinds of foolishness going on. I won't go into all that. But for Luther, the gospel was justification or salvation by grace through faith. And it's all a gift. It's all God's gift to us. He gives us a Savior, and then he enables us to accept him. All right. So, but James says, faith without works is dead. And Luther kind of, well, now it sounds like you're, you want to you turn faith into works. You know, that's what he was concerned about. Oh, he, didn't, he didn't like the wording. He didn't like the wording. However, James was right. He may not have put it in words that Luther liked, uh, and you've got to be careful. Don't turn faith into an accomplishment. Don't turn faith into another good work. You know, just we've got to try not to do that, and we can do it if we remember it's the Holy Spirit that enables us to have faith. But... When we, when we have faith, the, the, uh, what the Holy Spirit wants us to do, okay, I'll put it this way. <clears throat> because we believe that we are saved by grace through faith, uh, this, this makes a difference in our life. It can't help it. Uh, it, I mean, somebody, there's some saying, you know, that if I were hauled before a court and accused of being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict me? <laughs> you know. Uh, and I, and, but here again, I, I don't take any credit for that. I believe it's the Holy Spirit that called me into faith and that helps me to grow in the faith, sanctification, it enlightens me. So, yes. Our faith affects the way we live. It affects the way we live. It affects how we relate to people. Or, I mean, I, I'm not going to say, or it should, because then, I mean, then it's back to us again. I'm just saying that it will. It does. Uh, people who believe in Jesus as their Lord and Savior uh, are people that want to be instruments of God's grace in the lives of others. I'm not sure I'm getting this right, but I think the Holy Spirit's working through my words. So I have confidence that, that you who are listening understand this. Uh, I talked about this before. I've written about this, about our little church of grace and what we've, what we've uh, been able to do, but it's not what we've been able to do. I mean, there again, you got to be so careful. Oh, look at us. We're really great. We collected 4,000 bottles of water. My, we're really... No. How did that happen? How did it happen? I mean, it's not like being in the army. If you're a company commander, you can tell your troops what to do, and they better do it. That's not the way it is. No, uh, God didn't. Now you collect four thousand bottles of water for those people over at Genesis, or you know that isn't how it works. Nobody said that. Nobody demanded that. Nobody said, "Now this is what you got to do, and you better." Nobody did that, did they? No. It just happens. It just happens. It's almost as though we can't help ourselves. We can't help ourselves. We simply have to. We, uh, we, we, can't, we, can't, uh, we can't resist. And of course, as you grow in your faith, calls, enlightens, sanctifies, that has to do with growing in holiness, growing in our faith. As we're growing in our faith, we, we can't help ourselves. We just got to get some water. Not got to in this, you know what I mean. But we have to, we want to, oh, I go, oh, i got to get some water. Is it too late for me to, for my water? <laughs> That's what I, see what I'm saying? I know you do. Uh, finally, 
we, and this, if this is my last sermon, well, I'm going to have one more sermon, not next week, but the next week, and it's going to be kind of farewell. So I don't, I'm going to be, it will leave that. In some ways, this is, this is uh, the last, well, it's not the last, but I mean, well, anyway, uh, here, here is what, here's the good news. Let me put it that way. Here's the good news. The good news, and this is what separates the gospel from all the other religions of the world. They're all about what you got to do. So you're always asking when you've done enough of what you got to do, and the answer is never. So you keep trying to do more and more and more of what you got to do, but you always fail. Ugh. The gospel is about what God has done. He loves us so much that even though we sin and fall short of His glory, even though we go astray, even though we we uh, fall short of His glory, and we sure do, He loves us so much that He gave His only begotten Son. He gave His Son to be our Savior. He gave His Son so that we might not have to pay the consequences of sin. The Bible says that we sin and fall short, and, and the penalty for sin is death. That's what it says, and we know it's true. We know it's true. Uh, we live in a world there's, oh my goodness, death all around us, suffering, pain, violence. But Jesus comes down into the world and he says, I'm going to rescue you. You're not going to spend eternity separated from your Father in heaven. In fact, you're going to spend eternity in his kingdom. In his kingdom. When you die, your bodies are going back to the ground, but you're not. Your souls are going to be taken up into the heavenly kingdom and to a place prepared. Not only does he give us the gift of everlasting life, but he then enables us to receive the gift and to grow in our faith. Yes, the gift can be rejected. Yes, the gift can be pushed away. We can say, thanks, but no thanks. That's possible. But let me tell you something. When it comes to resisting God's grace, you got to work at it. you got to work at it. He never gives up. I, uh, I won't go into any detail. Uh, let me see how I can make sure I don't go into any detail. But I had a marvelous conversation recently and it was kind of along the lines of what we're talking about. And uh, somebody wanted to visit, and somebody that I hadn't seen for many years, a number of years, and uh, who was kind of in a time of, of uh, struggling and, and so on. And so uh, we, we visited. We got together, and, uh, and it, it, what was happening there wasn't about me. It wasn't about me at all. It's not about me. But what was happening there is that the Holy Spirit was working through a relationship. A relationship. Because what we did is, is we, we ended up talking about what we've been talking about. About faith and about grace. And about no matter how uh, dark... Uh, the valley may be, no matter how tough the situation is, God's grace is constant. We've all experienced it. We've all experienced it because we believe in a God of grace. Amen.
Jesus, a life that is true, striving to please Him in all that I do, yielding allegiance, glad-hearted and free. This is the pathway of blessing. Jesus, Lord and Savior, I give myself to Thee. For Thou in love and atonement didst give Thyself for me. I own no other master, my heart shall be Thy throne. My life I give henceforth to Thee. special music. We thought that, well, that fits just right with what our focus was on today, because as, as people of faith, uh, we want to live for him. Not because, again, because we have to. We want to. We want to be instruments of God's grace uh, in our lives and in the lives of others. So that was a wonderful uh, song. And, but now it's time for our closing prayers. So I'm going to put my glasses on here so I can read some of the names that are on our prayer list. So let's, uh, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful. Our words can't begin to express our gratitude for your grace that you have given to us a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And then by the power of the Holy Spirit, you have enabled us to believe in him. Whosoever believeth in him well, we believe. Uh, we are people of faith. We know who we are and whose we are. We are your children. We're on the way to glory. And in the meantime, you are going to use us as instruments of your grace in the lives of those around us. 
there are an awful lot of people that need to experience a touch uh, from you, and, and, uh, and so often you do that uh, through, your, through your, your people. And uh, so we've had lots of uh, opportunities to be able to, uh, to do the things that you would have us to do, and we just love doing them. They're so special. We love to, to love others because we've been loved. So help us to continue our journeys on this earth. Help us to uh, grow in our faith, even though a lot of us are older now, but uh, we're not through growing. And uh, help us uh, lead us forward. Until for each of us the journey here is completed and then we take up residence in the kingdom of heaven. We become members of, uh, of the body of believers, the church triumphant. Heavenly Father, we're thankful that we can pray for others today and that we have uh, a number of people who are continuing to battle cancer. We pray for uh, Blair and Becky and Scott and Sally and Kelly and Jim and Haley and Max and Arnie, Shelly, Tammy, Phyllis, Glenn, uh, Rose and Wayne. And we know there are others too that are, this is a tough one. Cancer is a very substantial enemy. Uh, but uh, they're discovering more and more uh, ways to help people to defeat that enemy. So we pray for for those uh, that are uh, struggling with uh, cancer. We pray for others that are confronted with different uh, situations. Uh, we pray for Dale and Kathy, for Mary and Gordon. We pray for uh, Mavis, who's doing well back there in Fargo. She's recovered, recovering well from her uh, hip, breaking her hip and having it replaced. We pray for Fred uh, back there in Illinois. We pray for uh, Gail and, and Will and Roman. We pray for Donna Marie and Troy and Nancy and Joanne and Kenny and uh, Dave, who had a procedure this past week that went very, very well. And we pray for our children, Asher, Johnny, Liam, and Josiah, as well as the other children that we've had on our prayer lists, many of whom are doing very, very well, and all of whom uh, have experienced uh, progress, and some uh, won't be fully recovered because of birth problems, but, but they're doing well. And so we pray for all of them, and then uh, we pray for the people down there in uh, Louisiana, that area, who are having another storm. We know that how tough that must be. But we pray for them that the, this hurricane will not be too bad. Uh, they've had so much problems. We pray for those out in California that have sustained a lot of damage and loss of lives uh, with the forest fires. We pray for those uh, with uh, the... COVID-19 and the families of those who have lost loved ones. Finally today we are going through a turbulent times in a lot of ways, uh, but we pray for our country, we pray for America, and uh, we pray that uh, in the weeks ahead that you will watch over this nation uh, that we love. And uh, we pray all of these things in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.